Hey guys, Matt here with Bleepin' Jeep. Everything off-road, none of the boring stuff. Today I want to show you how to change the oil in your 3.6 JL Wrangler. Let's get started. Alright, so first of all, how do you know it's time to change your oil? Well, let's go ahead and start the car and I'll show you. You're going to get a little warning that says oil change required. But you can also go down to, this is speedometer, one, there's the oil change required sign. But you can also go down to number two, vehicle info, and then go over to the right or to the left, that's oil pressure, and you'll notice it changes to red, and it says oil life, zero percent, everything's red on there everything's green over here that's pretty cool so if you notice there we got 10,000 miles out of this oil change but uh, on page 206 of your manual it basically says that this vehicle is equipped with an automatic oil change indicator system and depending on how you drive the vehicle if you have a lot of starts and stops or if you're driving in heavy traffic a lot of times or uphills or uh, I don't know, racing conditions, then it's going to illuminate as early as 3,500 miles or as late as 10,000 miles depending on driving conditions. So whenever it is you get that oil change indicator light, it's pretty simple. You'll need to change your oil and these are the only tools that you'll need. You'll need something to put your used oil in, you'll need some full synthetic 0W20 weight oil, and Mopar recommends Pennzoil or Shell. In fact, that's what they're rebranded with. You'll need an extension with a 13 millimeter socket. You'll need a socket wrench, a little pick or a tiny screwdriver. You'll need a 15 16 socket, or I believe that is a 24 millimeter. A Mopar 349 filter. I don't know why that's in there. You don't need a zip tie. You'll need a rag, and unless you're really good at hitting the hole, you'll probably want a funnel. All right, so the first thing, we'll need to crawl under here. Put the oil catch right underneath the oil pan. What's great about the JL is that it's pretty high off the ground. We don't really have to lift it up or anything. Next we're just going to take this loose and drain the oil. Make sure to set that aside. We'll need that back here in a minute. Now while that's draining, let's go ahead and change the oil filter and on the JL that's located inside the engine bay. And what we're looking for is right next to the filler is this piece right here and that is where your oil filter is. So we're going to loosen that and it'll come right out. It's going to drip a little bit of oil so be careful when you do that you can flip it upright like this and pull it out. Okay, so there's your filter. The next step, we're going to take it and pull it out. This is a cartridge filter instead of one of the typical ones you're used to. What we need to do is pull the new filter out, and in the bottom of this box, there's an O-ring. We're going to take the old O-ring off of here, and we're going to roll the new O-ring on. You might want to lubricate it a little bit with this used oil and then slip it over and push it down to where the old one was right in this groove there we go now put the new filter in there and it's ready to be reinstalled so just come back over we're going to put the new filter in screw it down by hand and then we'll just snug it up with the wrench you don't need to get it too tight just tight enough That's perfect. Now before you put new oil in, make sure you come back under here and put this plug back in. I'll admit it, I've done that a few times. It makes a mess. Alright. Let's tighten this back up. We're just going to get it snug. And now we can go back up top. Okay, now we want to come back up front. We're going to open the oil cap here, put our clean funnel in, and we're going to pour five quarts, which is this whole jug, right into here. 
Now that we've changed the oil, we need to go ahead and clear the warning. To do that, there's two ways. Why there's two, I have no idea. But the first way, we're not going to put our foot on the brake, so that won't start the car. You're going to put it into run, and then you're going to slowly press the gas pedal one, two, three times, and then you're going to turn it off, and that will clear the code. The second way is pretty similar to what we did before. We're going to put it into run without starting the vehicle, and then we're going to scroll down until we find the oil change. Trans temp, oil temp, oil pressure. Hold OK to reset. So on the steering wheel, we're going to hold OK. And now it's back at 100%. Everything turns to green. That lets the Jeep know that we have changed the oil and the filter. And now we can get another 10,000 miles out of the oil. Now technically we should be good with that five quarts that we added, but really what you want to do is start the vehicle, let it warm up, this will circulate the oil through the filter, then let it cool down for a few minutes, come back, check the oil on a flat level surface, make sure you're good, and then you are completely finished. You want that oil to show at the top of the marks here, and on most vehicles if the oil is at the bottom that means you add one quart to fill it to the top. One more thing to note, if you're not going to be using the Mopar filter, make sure you get an XL or extended life oil filter that can handle the 10,000 mile oil change. Alright guys, thank you so much for watching. If you enjoyed the video, hit the thumbs up, subscribe, and we will see you next time.